So today I finished implementing the capability to control multiple stages simultaneously and asynchronously from the GUI, as well as um, getting a consistent, meaningful color scheme in the GUI. So I'm going to demonstrate both of those things. So let's just start the relay server. So uh, this is on the lab machine. And then over in the GUI, we press this connect button to connect. Um, and then over here, we can see that that's connected, which is great. Now, the other thing that's happened is I've got this heartbeat. So every second it's uh, checking, well, it, it, the relay server is sending a signal to the GUI to say, hey, we're still here, we're still here, we're still here. If that signal disappears for a period longer than three seconds, um, the GUI will assume that the connection's died and it'll try to disconnect. Um, that way the GUI won't hang um, endlessly or think that it's connected when it's not. So uh, just to demonstrate that, I've got this code here. Um, this, these three exclamation marks, when you press them, um, when you press that button, it sends a command to shut down the relay server, but it doesn't tell the GUI that it's done yet. So let's try pressing that. So press this. Um, so we've sent that, and then we've got a heartbeat loss detected, and also you can see on the lab machine, the server's been shut down. Anyway, we want the server to be on, so let's turn it back on and press connect again. Um, and we've got our, our heartbeat ticking over again, which is great. Um, so I need to demonstrate that I'm actually able to control multiple stages simultaneously. So let's have a look at the camera. So here we've got the camera. Um, I've also moved the screen in the lab because it kept getting knocked around by the the scatterometer. Uh, when I press the um, random dance button, it will send the stages to various positions. So let's let's try that. So we set the random dance command. You can see multiple stages moving at the same time. Um, and I can do that again to get another set of positions. So this is good. And the GUI remains responsive while it's happening. Um, and yeah, these other various buttons work as well, which is good. So for example, the re return to datum is pretty important. Um, so this is now returning back to the place where um, it should be the zero positions for what we uh, can see on the GUI. So this is gonna turn all the way around. Um, I'll just wait for it to do that. Okay, and then that's then facing the light source. Now let's have a look at what's going on in the GUI. Um, the GUI, we're, I've revised all these colors and tried to add uh, more correlation between the different panes. So I haven't added the things to 3D because it's a fair bit of hassle um, to do dynamic 3D objects. Um, but in these three panes, I'll just play with things and you'll be able to see what happens. So this is the inclination. And you can see um, how that affects both the azimuth view and the scattering plane view. Um, so all these colors are the same. So like this, this arc here is that, and, and over there it's the same thing. We can rotate the azimuth angle. Um, we can change the start angles and the final angles. Um, and so this line is the same as this line, and this line is the same as that line. We can change the reading counts, and then we can have a look in the 3D view to see uh, what's going on. Um, we've added the labeling, which was actually in a previous day's work, but um, I've added the azimuth heading here and the sample Z axis to this view as well, as well as including a view of the sample, so we're actually looking from the top. Uh, that's about it for today, so I'll stop the recording here.